Why do so many Americans live paycheck to paycheck, accumulate massive amounts of debt, and struggle financially to maintain the American dream? It all boils down to the financial decisions that we make. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. For the best infinite banking and financial advice, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell so that you're notified when we upload new videos. Security, freedom, and doing what we enjoy doing are all part of the American dream. Mm -hmm. However, when we checked all those boxes, we realized that we weren't happy and we had buyer's remorse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the reason is because it came with debt. And we realized at that point that we weren't prepared financially to succeed. By the end of this video, you will have five problems that we face here in the U.S. And the very first problem we believe is financial literacy. As Americans, we are very dependent on what the financial institutions tell us to do with our money. We very rarely tend to take the time to do the research ourselves to figure out what our best options are. And for that, we end up in massive amount of debt and paying money to the financial institutions every single year because we just don't understand how the financial game is played. So Darius and I very much found our purpose in teaching individuals about infinite banking and financial literacy because we realized that it was something that affected ourselves and we just really want to be able to help others learn how to level up and become in control of their finances. Right. Because financial freedom really all boils down to the decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. And if you are in control and understand where your expenses are going and understand how to budget so that you are in control of your money and your money isn't controlling you, mm -hmm. you can live a completely different lifestyle because you have the freedom and the flexibility to know exactly what your money is doing and how you can impact your life for a better opportunity. Problem number two is overspending. If you remember what Carmen mentioned earlier about you should tell your money where to go using a budget versus your money telling you where it went. If let's say you're in the market for a brand new home, we'll be at the mercy of the banks for them to let us know how much we can afford versus us going there, knowing our numbers and telling them how much we want to spend. Because the bank may tell us that we can afford a $500,000 house. In actuality, you should be looking at a home around three hundred and fifty dollars or $400,000. Now, the reason why we talk about this is because when you think about the monthly payment over time with a $400,000 or $500,000 house, we're talking $100 difference, which isn't that much when we look at our budget. Mm -hmm. But the things that we don't take into consideration is maybe that increase of a home got us a another bedroom or two that we weren't expecting to furnish. Mm -hmm. Maybe it bought us another 500 or 1,000 square feet that we weren't planning on heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it bought us a larger yard that we weren't thinking that we were going to have to maintain. Those are all those little pieces that add up which cause us to overspend. Mm -hmm. Because when we typically buy a house, we're always thinking about the future and the what ifs and the what's going to happen when we need to buy houses for the time in which we are living right now. Because I know Darius and I are guilty of buying too much much house than we needed. We had three bedrooms that stayed empty nine to ten months out of the year just mm -hmm. because we were expecting to be flooded with visitors and it just didn't happen. So we spent a lot of extra money heating and cooling our house and maintaining the yard because of the things that we thought were going to happen. Now we tell you this so that you don't make the same mistakes that we did and we're telling you now that it is not a good idea to overspend for a house. Get the house that fits your needs not the house that you think that people are going to come and visit when they actually not. We also overspend for cars. We buy cars for other people. I think we do because the only thing you see is the inside of that car. And the only thing you want to do is get from point A to point B. So you may be looking, you may need a Honda Civic, but you go and buy this Acura when the only thing you're going to do is drive it from home to work. The monthly payments may not be that big of a difference, but just like Carmen mentioned earlier with the house, we put ourselves in a position to have to spend more on fuel. The maintenance costs are a little more. There's just more expenses that goes into maintaining an Acura versus a Honda. So take these things into consideration so that we don't commit this problem of overspending for things that we don't necessarily need. And number three is keeping up with the Joneses. And that goes back to the overspending that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So we buy more house than we need, we buy more car than we need, and this is all because we wanna keep up with our neighbors or our friends and family. Now, it may not be called keeping up with the Joneses now. I think it's keeping up with the Kardashians in 2019. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true. So the whole point is, right, we, we want what other people have. Right. And instead of taking a moment to appreciate the things that we work so hard for, we're always thinking about the next biggest, baddest gadget or the nicest house or the nicest car or the nicest jewelry or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So we really need to, again, hone into what our income actually is and the things that we can afford because we can't continue to put ourselves in these deficits where we are always behind. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not saying that you don't deserve nice things. If you want nicer things, then you just have to figure out how to produce more. Mm -hmm. But until you produce more, we don't want you to continue to go into debt to try to afford the things that you can't afford right now. So if you want nicer things, then we have to figure out how can you afford to get those things. So How can you increase your income to afford those things? Exactly. And that's all it's about. So is it creating an online business? Is it creating side hustles? Is it, is it investing? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses and overspending and putting us in the hole, we need to take that money and invest it into ways that we can produce more cash flow to bring to our circle so that we can then afford the things that we can buy these days. Mm -hmm. So do us a favor and comment below with a financial problem that you believe is affecting our society. For more information and understanding your personal finances, use the link above to understand the difference between good debt and bad debt. Problem number four is money leaks. Money leaks are small things that we spend money on that add up over time and over time they become very large. Now we're not gonna go into the details of the, these money leaks because we actually did a video on this that we're gonna put in the description below. Or above, and, <laughs> either one. <laughs> but a few examples of those are lottery tickets or uh, gym memberships. And uh, ooh, a good one is storage units. We didn't, we didn't put that in the video, but this is a really good one because- It should be in the video. It should be in the video. Yeah. But storage units are really expensive. Actually, we store so much stuff till we've created a billion dollar industry out of storage units. That's because we purchase so many things that we have to basically buy a separate facility to store our junk. Yeah, so not only did we spend money on the Junk, junk is probably a harsh word. Our, our priceless possessions. Right. <laughs> we, we spend a ton of money on our priceless possessions that have to be stored at a different facility that we rent every single month. So just think about all of that money that's leaving us. When we should lean out our house, first mm -hmm. and foremost, and put those precious things on display for the world to see. Right, and again, problem number four is money leaks. Small things that add up to, over time, become very big. Mm -hmm. And problem number five, we think, is education. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get us wrong, we believe education is super important. However, when we talk about education, we are talking about colleges and universities because we are taught as a society to go to college and to go to university, and that is amazing. However, a lot of kids these days have no idea or no clue what they want to be when they grow up, and that's not their fault. But what happens is they end up spending tens of thousands of dollars on education and they're still lost within the education industry trying to figure out what it is that they're going to do when they grow up. Right, because they go there and then they change their major from nursing to engineering to psychology to all these different theater. things, theater. <laughs> and then still have to front the bill for the time that they spend there. And now these days, so many college graduates are graduating with a college degree and a bill of $50,000 plus and are struggling to find a job in the industry in which they studied. And now over 50% of college graduates aren't even practicing what they studied in school. And I know I, for one, can totally attest to that because I have a degree in communications and even have a master's degree. And I have a degree in engineering. And here we are talking to you on YouTube about finances. <laughs> and our combined bill for college education was over $100,000. So what I really want to make sure that I clarify is we aren't discouraging people to go to college. Right. If anything, we're just saying have a more strategic approach with college. So it may even be worth taking a year or two off just to figure out what it is that you want to do and what you want to study mm -hmm. so that you're not spending all of that time and paying all this money going to college when you're lost and trying to figure out your journey. So just take the time to figure out what it is that you want to do. And then once you've locked that in, then go to college and get the education that you need to further yourself. And the point that we're trying to make here is the common denominator in all the situations, all the, the things that we mentioned is debt. And one of the places that we got this information from is the usdebtclock.org, which we are going to put in the link below so that you can see exactly where all of our money is going. As a country, we are $22 trillion in debt. 
And what's included in this $22 trillion of debt is personal debt, mortgage, student loans, and credit cards. And counting. These numbers are continuing to increase every single day just due to our production levels as a society. We are constantly spending, spending, spending money, which is allowing the financial institutions to control more and more of our debt, which means that's more money that we're paying on an annual basis in principal and interest every single year just because of the debt that we continue to consume. So that means if you don't budget for you, do it for your country. <laughs> Because Lord knows we can save a dollar or two. Now that you know the five money problems that we face here in the U.S., we've created a free guide called 52 Ways to Own Your Own Lifestyle that we want to give to you free so you can understand exactly how you can use infinite banking to turn all your liabilities into assets. So use the link below to download your free guide. And also, if you want to join a community of like-minded high achievers just like yourself, then check out our Patreon community where we teach up-to-date infinite banking information so you can navigate this tricky space. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel. Make sure you share this video with a friend so that they can get this information also. And don't forget to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will. <laughs>